Why are we spending billions on the buildings on this precinct if the processes and procedures here don't amount to anything? Why do we vote to adopt orders if the government is going to ignore them? Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Trudeau's past continues to come back and haunt him as the long-lost documents of the Winnipeg lab leak scandal are finally revealed. For those that may not remember how this unfolded, here's a brief refresh. Let's take a look. Good morning. Dr. Zhang Chu has been recognized by the Governor General's Innovation Awards. This work can be done without teamwork. She and the team at the National Microbiology Lab have been praised for developing an Ebola vaccine. But just over a week ago, Chu, her husband, and her students from China were evicted from Canada's only Level 4 lab, their security access revoked. Staff at the lab was told last Monday the couple is on leave and not to communicate with them. We're getting this from sources who work at the lab, but who don't want to be identified for fears they'll be punished. They say this is coming just months after IT specialists entered Chu's office after hours and replaced her computer, and her superiors stopped authorizing work trips to China. Manitoba RCMP confirmed it was called in by the Public Health Agency of Canada on May 24th. A spokesperson says the agency is investigating a policy breach, calling it an administrative matter, and it's taking steps to resolve it expeditiously. We can assure Canadians that there is no risk to the public and that the work of the NML continues in support of the health and safety of all Canadians. Following that breaking story, it was announced that an RCMP investigation was underway to understand what happened. Time passed, and then more time passed. Conservatives began calling for the production of documents over what happened at the lab, but it was refused. They called on them to produce these documents using formal parliamentary processes that ordered the Liberals to produce the documents. Still, they refused. Mr. Speaker, why do Canadians send 338 of their fellow citizens to this chamber if its decisions are ignored? Why do we spend $400 million a year on Parliament if our votes don't mean anything? Why are we spending billions on the buildings on this precinct if the processes and procedures here don't amount to anything? Why do we vote to adopt orders if the government is going to ignore them? When will this government show some respect for Parliament and follow the order of this House to produce the documents related to the breaches at its Winnipeg lab? Well, here, here. The Honourable Minister. The government even went so far as to actually sue the Speaker of the House, Anthony Rota, to prevent the documents from being revealed. The article reads, The legal challenge against a ruling of the House stunned opposition MPs who were notified about the court application late Wednesday afternoon. An order of the House backed by a majority of MPs last Thursday called on the Public Health Agency to produce records it had been withholding from a Commons Committee for months. Mr. Rota called the court action a quote-unquote urgent matter and vowed to vigorously fight the government, saying House of Commons law clerk Philippe Dufresne will prepare a legal defense. Seeing that he was not going to get away from the committee investigations and the production orders, Trudeau did the one thing he vowed never to do and criticized Stephen Harper for. The Liberal Party platform in 2015 said it wouldn't use prorogation as a political tactic. There are several committees investigating you right now, and those efforts will be shut down as a result of your move today. How can you have said that in 2015 and do this now? Stephen Harper and the Conservatives prorogued Parliament in order to shut it down and avoid a confidence vote. He dissolved Parliament to escape scandal on August 15th, 2021, right before the start of the fall session and called the 2021 election. That was that, but it didn't stop the Conservatives from their pursuit of the documents. The Conservatives have been fighting for almost four years to see these documents. The Liberals were steadfast in their effort to prevent that. And today, we finally learned why. We've just received these documents that Trudeau has been covering up for years. Documents related to a massive security breach at the Trudeau government's 
most sensitive laboratory, where the most dangerous viruses and pathogens are studied and handled. We have learned that the Trudeau government's head of pathogens was collaborating with members of Beijing's People's Liberation Army who are responsible for bioweapons and bioterrorism. We know now that uh, a People's Liberation Army official was able to gain personal access, walk in the door, look at computers, and have access to all of our most important vir virological secrets. Let me, if you think any of this is hyperbole, read the report yourself. This is from government documents, the Trudeau government's own documents. It says here on page 142, Winnipeg lab scientist Dr. Chu, special pathogens unit, the top person in that job, according to documents on page 242, quote, represents a serious and credible danger to the government of Canada as a whole, and in particular at facilities considered high security due to the potential for theft of dangerous materials attractive to terrorists and foreign entities that conduct espionage damage the economic security of Canada, end quote. It states further on page 239, investigators assess that Dr. Chu communicated with foreign entities during her trips to China. The evidence obtained from interviews and from information collected from the electronic content of her devices reveal that this is indeed the case. As a subject matter expert with access to sensitive information and dangerous materials, Dr. Chu presents a realistic and credible threat to Canada's economic security when conducting repeated and clandestine meetings with foreign entities, end quote. So just to kind of unpack what the problem is here, folks. So there are different levels to laboratories around North America. And the higher the level, the more sensitive and the more dangerous the material is contained within that lab. And also the more equipment or more specialized equipment, they would need to be able to handle those samples safely. So the Winnipeg Laboratory is Canada's only level four laboratory. And that means that in Canada, that has the most dangerous viruses in the country under lock and key. The problem is that these scientists were suspected of espionage, were suspected of working with PRC officials and transporting them potentially very dangerous viruses that could potentially be used as bioweapons. This is a extreme concern and this is why the Conservatives have been in hot pursuit of these documents for the last four years. So this is no joke. Well, both of the viruses that were sent to the Wuhan lab were, well, the Hennepa virus and the Ebola virus, and both of those have mortality rates of up to 70%. That, that's really, really bad. And what does that mean? That means that 70% of the people that catch it are dead. That's what that means. You know, COVID had a mortality rate of something like 0 0.05 or something like something that. Something like that. Um, so just think about that. COVID having a less than 1% mortality rate versus these viruses that have a 70% mortality rate. So it's serious, serious stuff. And sure, these people were detected and then they were ousted from, from Canada. But the Liberal government refused to tell anybody what happened. Then it says Dr. Chu conducted joint research with the Major General Chen Wei of the People's Liberation Army, who according to page 236, is a noted top virologist at the Academy of Military Medical Scientists and is China's chief biological defense expert engaged in research related to biosafety, biodefense, and bioterrorism. Bioterrorism, end quote. And these are, def these are do documents, this is right out of the government's own documents. Trudeau, what did he do when he found out about this? 
Did he immediately inform Canadians of the breach? Did he fire anybody? No, nope, no one was fired. Did he call an inquiry to get to the bottom of it? No, nope, he didn't do that either. Instead, he covered it all up. He defied four parliamentary orders to release these documents. When the Speaker tried to get them, he sued the Speaker to cover this up. He said it was all for national security, but well, we know from a committee composed of four members of Parliament, including one Liberal, and three judges, and I quote, the, the information appears to be mostly about protecting the organization from embarrassment for failures in policy and implementation, not legitimate national security concerns, and its rele release is essential to hold the government to account. In other words, there was no national security reason why we couldn't have had this before. It was only because Trudeau didn't want the embarrassment before an election. So what did he do then? He collaborated, knowing this, he collaborated with Beijing to buy a vaccine for COVID. And that's true. We know that China was the only country that Canada collaborated with in terms of vaccines. When China produced the vaccine, it didn't meet Health Canada's standards. And that's why Canada ended up buying like something like 10 times the amount of vaccines that we needed for our population because they were just scrambling to buy up anything and everything that they could because they put all their eggs in one basket in China's vaccine. We don't know the final number, but it was somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 million that we sent a, uh, a Chinese a pharmaceutical company called CanSino. And some of you probably remember that name because there was a whole whole scandal around that. Why we're sent, why we're sending a, a Chinese company that uh, that money? But that's what they did. And there was there was no way it was ever going to meet Health Canada standards. So, you know, there you go. But the, but he did this, knowing that these two scientists were collaborating with China and to steal our stuff. This is this is the prime minister, and this is also the same government that the NDP has been propping up this whole time. This is the government that the NDP has supported year after year after year. But, you know, at least they got a crappy little dental plan. Oh, that, and let's not forget their framework for their pharmacare program. Yeah, which has no chance of even seeing the light of day in terms of having royal assent and, and getting across the floor so way to go ndp and ndp voters this is what your party has been doing i hope you hold them to account could you imagine if the deal that trudeau wanted to sign with beijing had gone ahead and we had procured china made vaccines after learning this information that's what was in this guy's head and if you think for a minute, because I know there'll be all kinds of excuses while he's not responsible and how could he possibly take ownership of what happens in his government. Let me quote him. He has a document called Open and Accountable Government. And I quote, as head of government, the prime minister has special responsibilities for national security, end quote. It's his responsibility. This is his government's lab. It's not a random university lab. It's the top lab for the prime minister's public health agency and he is exclusively responsible for the machinery of government as prime minister of the country. So this is on Justin Trudeau. I will add one last thing. Not only did he cover it up, not only did he try to get a vaccine from China after knowing this, he called a snap election to make sure that the voting would happen before this came out. And what happened in that election? Beijing interfered to help him win it. This is a man who says he admires China's basic communist dictatorship. We cannot trust Justin Trudeau to keep our people and its country safe. We need a strong, conservative, common sense government that will root out foreign interference, protect our critical secrets and our medical research, and stand on guard for our country to keep our people and our nation safe.